Amen. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. And as you're turning, amen, we've been making the announcement, but this has come upon us very quickly, the news of it had. But uh, Breck is getting married. Wave your hand, Breck. Everybody knows Breck. And uh, she's getting married. And tomorrow night, ladies, is her wedding shower. That's tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Don't forget prayer meeting Tuesday morning. Don't forget Wednesday evening kids outreach and Bible study and worship. And uh, Friday is youth night at 630. And does anybody know what Saturday is? Someone help me. What's Saturday? The picnic, the church picnic at Sycamore Park. We'll have information on it. It's always a wonderful time from the fried chicken to the crawdads. We don't eat the crawdads. They catch them. But uh, it's always a great time. And we're looking forward uh, to that as a church. And uh, does anyone know what is going to begin two weeks? Two weeks from today, we begin revival. And we'll be making more of an emphasis of that as we go through uh, the uh, services, the preceding services. We want to prepare our hearts for what God would do in them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Time got away from us, but that's a great thing when we're worshiping. I've come from a week of speaking where they put a big clock up and tell me I have to speak for an hour. And that, you know, that was a struggle. I could tell you all were praying for me. <laughs> Help me to be able to, to speak and to preach that long. Amen. I do appreciate your prayers. I could, I could tell that you were praying for me. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word? On Sunday morning, we've been talking about spiritual blessings. It's not a list I made up. It's a list that Paul gave us. I wanted to read the initial verse one more time in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. I've got to hurry, and I don't have time for soapboxes, but I want you to notice it says spiritual blessings. We've turned the gospel into something else. We've made it about material blessings. Amen. It's spiritual blessings. And where are these spiritual blessings? Not parked in your garage. They're in heavenly places in Christ. Well, which blessing are we going to look at this morning? Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He did it. He gave it to us. The spiritual blessing I want to speak of this morning is an inheritance. If you are born again this morning, you have an inheritance. Hallelujah. Go ahead. You can be seated. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. You know, sometimes you connect the obvious dots. But why is an inheritance a spiritual blessing? How is that a spiritual blessing? Well, let's bring it into the natural realm. Suppose right before you came to church, you got the news that you had just received an unexpected inheritance of $1 million. If you had gotten that news this morning, do you think that your demeanor, your attitude, your behavior would be the same in church this morning as if you hadn't got the news? I mean, if you got the news this morning that you had just inherited a million dollars, would you consider that a blessing? Yeah. Your face would be lit up. You wouldn't be depressed. You'd be saying, I'm so depressed today. You wouldn't be bored, would you? You'd be excited. I mean, everything about you would exude your enthusiasm that you had got the news. That you, I mean, you'd be thinking of the car you was going to buy, the upgrade on the house, pay off all the bills. How, how many times you'd go through McDonald's. I mean, you'd have it all planned out. Just the news of an inheritance would change everything about you and I this morning. Would you agree with me? But listen, I want to tell you, you do have an inheritance. Hallelujah. If you have been born again, 
if you are trusting Jesus for your salvation, if you're a member of the family of God, you have an inheritance. How do you feel this morning? What are you thinking about this morning? What's your level of enthusiasm this morning? You've got an inheritance. Hallelujah. When you look at the word inheritance, it literally means a portion that has been allotted or assigned to be given to somebody. You've got all of this, but you've taken a portion and you've written somebody's name on it and say this is allotted to them. It's like going to the house at Christmas time, going home. There's all these presents, but you start looking. One of them's got your name on it. Amen. That's an allotment. Amen. That's the portion that's yours. You've been out all day, Dad, and you come home, and there's one piece of pie left in the pan. A lot of kids, even a lot of folks been through the house, but one piece of pie left in the pan. You know why it's left? Because Mom said, you kids don't dare touch that piece of pie. That's Dad's pie. She allotted it to you. She assigned Find it to you. Amen. You come as a visitor. Amen. There's a place set at the table. A kid starts to climb up in that chair. Mom or dad said, oh no. Oh no. We set that place for our guests. That's where they're going to be sitting today. Oh amen. And I know in the way that we apply it in particular. Amen. Somebody's got money. Somebody's written a will. And out of all their money, they designate a certain portion and Put your name by it and say that's designated to them. Amen. This word actually comes from the word lottery. How many remembers the time in the Old Testament when they chose the land for the different tribes by lot? However they did it. Amen. Drew a name on a piece of paper. They didn't do it that way, but they could have. And when they drew that name, that name went to that piece of real estate. Hallelujah. I'm preaching this morning. You have an inheritance out of everything God is out of everything God has he took a portion and he designated it for you he put your name on it he said this grace goes to them this peace goes to them this salvation goes to them this eternal life goes to them how many's glad for an inheritance oh hallelujah I'm not preaching fairy tale I'm preaching the word of God it's a spiritual blessing The sad thing, and I'm a million miles ahead of myself, but the sad thing is some God has apportioned out and put their name on it, but they never come to claim it. They never come to make it their own. Amen. This comes from the word lottery, and today far too many people are more interested in the world's lotteries than they are the inheritance of heaven. But I don't know how you feel. I'm interested in heaven's inheritance. Glory to God. I'm going to do this quickly but when I look in the Bible what is our inheritance what has been allotted and designated for us eternal life is our inheritance the rich young ruler he had the means of it wrong but he had the question and the reality right in Luke 18 the rich young ruler asked Jesus good master what shall I do to inherit eternal life oh hallelujah You don't earn it. You inherit it. But thank God eternal life is something we can inherit from God. Amen. Back when I was a teenager, they had that song that they would sing to an audience. Anybody here want to live forever? And the answer was, say I do. Hallelujah. How are you going to answer that? Anybody here want to live forever? Say I do. Not live forever in decay. Not live forever getting just older. But live forever with eternal life. Hallelujah. I want you to imagine what it would be like living in this world if there were no hope of eternal life. Amen. You know when it comes time to die, most folks that have money... They would give everything they had to keep on living just one more minute. Amen. That's true. Amen. Think about it. What if there was no life after death? If in this life only we had hope, we'd be what? We'd be of all men most miserable. But I'm telling you, we've got an inheritance. we got eternal life. We're going to live forever in the presence of God Almighty. I must hurry. What is our inheritance? It's the kingdom. 
not just when we get to heaven, but Christ's rule in our life right now. I want to share this one under a bit of a warning. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, Know ye not that in righteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. They will not, they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But He washed you, He cleansed you, and you will inherit the kingdom. Hallelujah. And if you think it's all reserved for for, for heaven, let me give you one more verse. Romans 14. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not just gates of pearl and streets of gold. But the kingdom of God is right here, right now. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Aren't you glad we have an inheritance of the kingdom? What is our inheritance? Even our inheritance is all the promises of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Be not slothful, but follow Followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I don't have time, but what promises do we inherit? Amen. All things work together for good to them that love God. What do we inherit? Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. Oh, how, what do we inherit? The promises of God. Which ones? All of them. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we have inherited the promises of God? What do we inherit? We inherit the blessing. First Peter 3.9. Not rendering evil for evil. We're railing for railing. But contrawise blessing. Knowing that you are there and too called. That ye should inherit a blessing. Oh what can I do to get God to bless me? Not a thing. Hey man I know we can repent and all of that. But what am I going? Nothing. You inherit the blessing. He's assigned you the blessing. He's written your name on the blessing. Oh an inheritance. I said an inheritance. Amen. Amen. Let me give you one more. I keep saying our inheritance isn't just in heaven, but it is heaven. First Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, not not subject to the ups and downs of Wall Street that fadeth not away. Where is it at? It's reserved in heaven for you. Heaven is our inheritance. If that's not good enough, not just heaven, but the whole universe. Hallelujah. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Hallelujah. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Hallelujah. That's our inheritance. Does that make anybody feel any better? You may got problems, but you also got an inheritance. You may have some tough to face this week, but you've got an inheritance. You may be sick, but you've got an inheritance. You may got bills piled up on the desk, but you've got an inheritance. You may got a situation. You don't know what, but you've got it. Oh, come Hallelujah. I'm going to give you quick three quick things about this portion that God has allotted us. First of all, an inheritance has an appeal. You know, we can say we never have, but I think if most folks were honest, they would admit when they were young, maybe older, they kind of got the daydreaming. And you know how the daydream goes? There was this filthy rich uncle they didn't even know they had. And one day they got a letter in the mail saying, you don't realize this is your uncle, but he was filthy rich and he died. And you are in the will. You say, yay! Wait, wait, he died. Yay! And there is instructions on how to collect what that filthy rich uncle left you. How many would just be real honest and say you've had that, that kind of daydream? And that wasn't just when you was a kid, it wasn't either. You was having hard economic times, you go out to the mailbox. It's going to be in there today, that rich old uncle I didn't know I had, he died. I'm in the wheel. 
What I'm trying to say is, listen, this is important. Throughout our lives, the idea of inheriting a large sum of money, that appeals to us. Oh, come on. Don't anyone sit there and say, oh, it don't appeal to me. If I found out I inherited a lot of money, I wouldn't like it. Yeah. How many does that appeal to, to find out, find out you just inherited a lot? A large? Well, sure it does. You know, think about it. I, I know I think too, too much sometimes, but think about it. What does it appeal to you? Because for most of us, we dream about inheritance because if we don't get it through inheritance, we're not going to get that kind of money any other way. Isn't that right? That's what appeals to us about inheritance because we're not going to get it any other way. Just be honest there, too. You've worked hard. You've been, you've been financially faithful, but you're never going to have that kind of money. Okay, man, you guys don't agree with me. Inherit a million dollars. Let's put it five million. How many, how many is going to have five million dollars any other way other than inherit it? You're not going to. I want to tell you, that's the whole essence of the inheritance. God gives us what we're not going to get any other way. Well, I'll work hard. Probably you'll never have five million dollars. I'll work hard. You'll never have grace. I'll work hard. You'll never have forgiveness. I'll work hard. You'll never have eternal life. But the essence of an inheritance is God gives you through an inheritance what you're not going to get any other way. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, thank God for an inheritance. These things we inherit for God. As I was preparing this week, I found myself singing that old song. I couldn't even find it on the internet. I don't know if I have the words right or not. But I remember in my early years of Bible school, they would sing it. It's an inheritance. A glorious heritage. How many remembers this? Coming down from the Father above. The sweetest gift. I've ever been given I'm so glad to know that it's mine you see the thing I, I remember about that song the choir would sing it somebody would sing it and almost every time people would shout I mean I said people would shout hallelujah most of them didn't fully understand what the spiritual inheritance was and they nearly didn't they never had hopes of, of a physical inheritance amen but we did realize something when we were shouting over that song we realized, amen, that we should get excited, amen, because in our spirits, we recognize whatever that inheritance was, if it came from God, it was wonderful, it was joy unspeakable and full of glory, amen, we weren't sure what the inheritance was, but if it was coming down from heaven and God above, we wanted it, to, you know, it permeated the whole service, we were there wanting what God had for us in that service and so when they talked about the inheritance coming out we wanted that too we just wanted what God had to offer hallelujah how many still says the inheritance has an appeal to me I want what God has put my name to this week I was in service every day about 10 hours and no they didn't have to put up for me all that time there were different speakers and so what I'm about to say, I joke about you falling asleep like you joke about my preaching long. I don't really preach long, but you do fall asleep. But no. <laughs> and uh, 10 hours, I was building up some sympathy for you guys. So I know it's a fight sometime to stay awake. My, my, my wife reminds me of that on Wednesday night. She said, honey, they're tired. They've worked all day. And I was fighting it this week. I, was trying, I mean, there were times my eyes were still open, but they were glazed. <laughs> different service, different, different, different place. <laughs> so I understand it's hard to fall asleep. And I'm going to tell you this. you got to understand our relationship. We, we have fun joking each other. And you know, my dad, he's had trouble staying awake in church and he gets the elbow, you know. And he told me, he said, yeah, I, just, I just can't keep my eyes open. And I said, now dad, 
if that rich old uncle dies, he's going to be pretty old if he's my dad's uncle, but if that, if that rich old uncle dies and you get a letter in the mail from the lawyers saying on certain date, come to my office and we're going to read that wheel and your name is in it. And you get there at the lawyer's office and they take you to the conf- conference room. I said, you know what? That, that wheel could begin with a lot of legalese. And that lawyer read legalese for 45 minutes. And then because the deceased wanted to leave a message, a rambling message, that lawyer reads for another 45 minutes. Just the ram- And then there's a long list of heirs. And there's lots of names to read with lots of inheritance. I said, you know what? I am convinced you would not fall asleep through the whole thing. You'd be sitting there with deep interest, with your ears attuned. It don't matter how long the reading of the wheel got. You'd be listening for your name. Amen. Isn't that true? Hallelujah. This isn't a guilt trip thing. It's just a good illustration. But I'm telling you, isn't that what we're doing when we're preaching the word? We're reading the wheel. How many during the reading of the wheel? Amen. You've heard your name in the reading of the wheel. I'm just talking about we're interested in this inheritance. I said we're interested in this inheritance. Hallelujah. It might take the thir- to get to the third verse of the song before you hear your name. But I think if you're listening, even in the singing, third verse, fourth verse, somewhere in there, you're going to hear your name. I'm going to inherit the good things of God. Amen. Fully interested, fully engaged. I feel in my heart. Amen. I feel in my heart this so heavily, but so much time is spent trying to get folks interested in something they should already be desiring with all of their hearts. You that labor in the gospel, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we're trying to convince people to be interested in what everything in them should be crying out for. I've seen those away from God and I'll do it. I want to do it. I'll keep doing it. But I feel in my heart I'm trying to convince them they should want something that everything in them ought to be crying out. That's for me. I've got to have it. I need it and I want it. This inheritance has an appeal. Amen. Paul said it was his mission, Acts 26, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and receive an inheritance. He said that's my mission to let people know they've got an inheritance. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It's not that God would put some people in the wheel. It's that they won't even show up for the reading they're not interested but they should be that's why later in this chapter Paul says what has to happen amen is that the eyes of their understanding must be enlightened that they may know what the hope of his calling is and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints the Holy Spirit knows how to enlighten the gospel will enlighten all they're interested in is drugs all they're interested in is carousing. All they're interested is, in, in is their own thing. But the Holy Ghost begins to move. The Word of God is preached. And suddenly they're not interested in that anymore. They're interested in being born again. They're interested in heaven. Oh, aren't you glad the day your eyes of understanding were enlightened and you became interested in the inheritance. Oh, that should have been the title. Interested in my inheritance. Secondly, an inheritance depends on association. While we're daydreaming, let me tell you what I've never daydreamed about. I've never daydreamed about being in Bill Gates' will. Let's pick someone older. Forget this inheritance. We want to get it a little quicker. I've never daydreamed in being in Warren Buffett's will. Can anyone, has anyone figured out why? I've never daydreamed that if he were to die, I'd be getting a letter from his lawyers said, you better come to our office. You're an heir of Warren Buffett. Has anyone figured out why I've never daydreamed that? I don't know him. He don't know me. We're not associated. And I'm for sure not his child. So why should I even daydream? 
You see, in most cases, the heir is a child. No association, no inheritance. It's different with God. I know him. He knows me. I'm his child. I can dream about an inheritance with him. I've got an association with him. Oh, hallelujah. We ought to come out of our pews. Oh, yes, oh, yes. I'm a child of the king. You see, the inheritance isn't built on how good I am, on my deserving it. Amen. The problem today, and I don't mean to be facetious, but the problem today is we have people expecting eternal life. We have people expecting the inheritance of heaven, and they don't have a relationship with God. That's true. I appreciate what my elders are saying it's true. People talking about heaven, going to heaven, and they have no relationship with God. We're in the wheel because we have a relationship. Just like on the natural scheme of things. Amen. The other day, I was commenting to Andrew. Oh, there, there's five bucks right there. I was commenting to Andrew how the older he gets, the more he looks like me. Oh, Dad, don't say that, he says. I said, yes, son. I said, you're looking more like me. You've inherited my good looks and my humility. And so I'd been joking him, so I'd said something aggravating, you know, to aggravate him. He said, Dad, you shouldn't act that way. I said, why not? I inherited from you. He said, Dad, you can't inherit things from your parents. I said, sure you can. He said, what? I said, insanity, frayed nerves. You, you inherit a lot of things from your kids. That's not the natural. Naturally, the children inherit from the father. Aren't you glad to be his child? We don't put anything on the table for God, but he's got a whole lot. He's allotted to us. In the first part of Ephesians, we learn how we're in relation, having predestined us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Our inheritance depends upon our association, and we have the closest of associations. We are his children. We are his heirs. We have an inheritance. Paul puts it this way in Romans. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Oh, I'm an heir. I'm a joint heir. Glory to God. Could anyone just do that right now? Lift up a hand and say, I'm an heir of God. There's an inheritance. Why? Because I've been good? No. Why? Because I'm deserving? No. Why? Because I'm something, someone important. No, it's because I got a relationship with him. He's my father. I am his child. Sometimes when there's a lot of money at stake, there'll be imposters. There'll be folks showing up claiming to be kin. Amen. Claiming to be kin. You can't do that and get this inheritance. You can act like you're born again. It's not act like being born again. It's being born again. Amen. There's others. They'll try to act real caring and concerned about the one with money. Don't, you know what happens. Even somebody got a lot of money about to die. Folks are starting to be real nice, real kind. They want in on that. Amen. It don't work that way with God. You don't try to impress Him with good works. The bottom line is, as Scripture says, God knows those that are His. The shepherd knows the sheep. The father knows the children. And the one that has the inheritance, He knows His his heirs. Hallelujah. I must move on in a moment. But one little note I want to make. We have a false assumption in America that's preached through the political channels. And the false assumption is every rich person inherited their money. They didn't work for it. Every rich person inherited their money. They didn't work for it. That's a false assumption. If that were true, pretty soon there wouldn't be any rich people. Right? Right? 
You can't just keep passing it on. It, it, would, it would soon disappear. Somebody had to work for it. And that's a false premise in America that if you're rich, amen, you inherit it. Some folks did. But a lot of people work for it. That's not true with America. That's not true with politics. It's not true with economics. But it is true with the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Not a person that gets this wealth of God. Amen. Work for for it and deserved it. Everybody that gets this wealth of God, they inherit it. Aren't you glad you're in the will? Hallelujah. I told you I wouldn't even preach it. But if you get what's in the will, somebody has to die. And Jesus died that we could receive what was in the will. Oh, hallelujah. Could I say this? Let's not get things even on the earthly sense. We can get this confused. What's greater? Just say you're my dad for a moment. What's greater? The inheritance I'm going to get from my dad or the reason I'm going to get it? I've got a great relationship. Thank God I'm saying be thankful for the inheritance. But the best thing about knowing we're going to receive the inheritance, inheritance is that we're receiving it because of the relationship we have with him. Last of all, an inheritance gives an assurance. I have a, and this is just an illustration. There's, there's no intent other than the illustration in telling this. But I had another middle-aged pastor friend of mine some time back. Middle age keeps getting older. I started saying I was middle-aged when I was about 42. And now I'm 54 or just about, and so that's middle age. And when I get to 60, that'll be middle age too. But another middle-aged pastor friend of mine, we got to talking about when they put the old horses out to pasture. <laughs> you know, you just get too old. You just can't do it anymore. And they say, hey, pastor, time to resign. You know, just put the old. And, and what's it going to be like then, you know? How are we going to subsist? You know, how's that going to happen? And we were talking about this forced in retirement. And I just asked him a question. I said, does that bother you? Are you concerned about that at all? And here's what he said. And there was no arrogance in this. He's a close friend. He was just sharing the realities of things. He said, I don't worry about the future at all. And I go, well, he's, he's more spiritual than I am. You know, I, I want to hear his secret. Yeah. He said, no, I don't worry about the future at all. I said, yeah, why? And he began to enumerate. All he was going to inherit from his parents and all he was going to inherit. And he did it in the right spirit. He wasn't waiting for him to anything, but he would just tell me. And all the things he was going to inherit from his wife's parents. And he says, you see, I don't have anything to worry about. You know, we do that spiritually and in real life. We start worrying about everything that's in our future. And the things we're going to be facing and how are we going to do it. And where are the resources going to come from. But God would like to, us to know this morning, if we would consider the inheritance that he has for us, we would have no need to worry about the future. <laughs> I know there's difficulties. I know there's perplexities. We are the children of God. Now, if you're not in Christ, if you're not born again, you have no inheritance. You have reason to be concerned. There'll be nothing when you get to that time. Did you know socially it's uncouth to presume you're an heir and socially it's uncouth to ask whether you're going to inherit or not or what you're going to inherit. That's uncouth socially. But spiritually, I must ask it. I must ask Am I going to inherit eternal life? Am I going to inherit the blessings of God? Although inheritance speaks of what we'll receive in the future, knowing that we have one, it'll help us get right through the right now. Even if you don't think that, think about if the market crashes. I should, I'm not going to jinx this thing. I don't believe in that. September, the market crashing. But think if the market crashes. If your 401k is suddenly gone. If the government fails and the social security is gone would you 
be worried about your future because there'd be nothing there. But I want to tell you, as a saint of God, God's kingdom's not going to crash. His economy's not going to fail. Your inheritance is there and you don't need to be concerned about the future because you got an inheritance. Don't take it from me. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house is an inheritance. I go away to prepare it for you. But when I come again, I'm going to take you to your inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I know it's Sunday morning, but could we give Him thanks for it? Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about the future. Because the inheritance, something good is ahead. You're facing sickness or the sickness of your loved one or the trials of the latter years of life. Something good is ahead. You're an heir. You're facing financial difficulties. You're facing uncertainties about your employment. Something good is ahead. You have an inheritance. You're hurting from a failed relationship. That's all you can see ahead is hurt and loneliness. But something good is ahead. You have an inheritance would you come music oh hallelujah I said hallelujah don't get excited about anything else you can get excited about that would you come music hallelujah glory to God we have an inheritance amen glory to God what must I do to inherit it's not in doing he had the question almost right you gotta be concerned about eternal life but the rich young ruler said what must I do to inherit it's not in doing it's in having a relationship with Jesus Christ Christ. That's where the inheritance comes from. Hallelujah. I don't want to overwork that thing about wheels, but I got to thinking about years ago. It's in so many stories in true life and in fiction, but in years ago, somebody rich would die and they didn't have any immediate heirs, just distant relatives. They died out west, and their distant relative was back east. Amen. The lawyer had the job of finding the heir. The lawyer had the job of finding the heir. He had advertised in the major newspapers. He had sent telegrams, and many times he would hire a detective, amen, to find the missing heir. I'm telling you, not only has God got an inheritance, but could I just stretch that story for just a little bit? Amen. I said, God has an inheritance. But I want you to know to you this morning, I've lost my Bible somewhere. That's very bad to be a preacher and lose your Bible. Hallelujah. You are an heir. God wants you to be an heir. And He has sent a telegram, if you please, letting you know that there is an inheritance for you. Not only that, Amen. I said, not only that, Amen. He has announcements ever time a preacher preaches I said every time a preacher preaches there is an announcement from heaven oh if you only realized it if you only wanted it you could be an heir of God and I'll tell you the greatest thing is there's also a detective it's the Holy Spirit he's out looking for folks don't you know that you're an heir he deals with our heart that you can inherit eternal life you can inherit the blessings of God I'm glad even God's out looking for the heir and what those need to realize is that's exactly what it is. Don't ever forget it. An inheritance is what God has apportioned and put a person's name on it. Oh, hallelujah. I don't understand that thing about unclaimed monies. You read it in the newspaper. Unclaimed monies. I'm telling you, if God's got an inheritance, it's time to claim it. He's allotted it out. He's a portion. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not talking about some other day. I'm talking about today. Amen. You're not born again. You don't have that relationship with Christ. You don't claim Him as your Father. He's got an inheritance for you. He's got grace. He's got forgiveness for your sins. He's got peace of mind and heart. He's got heaven. He's apportioned it out. He's put your name on And this morning, you can claim it. How do I claim it? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall I'll be saved. You'll be born again. You'll become His child. And becoming His child, you'll become His heir. Oh, hallelujah. You can be in the wheel and decline it. You can be in His wheel and accept it. One last verse. Paul getting excited what God has done. He said, I give thanks unto the Father. 
which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. I don't march up here. I'm thankful I'm a son of God, a child of God, but I don't like the attitude. I'm a kingdom kid. I'm God's child. God, do this for me. God, do that for me. I'm your child. I don't like that. No. Because I didn't have anything to do with it except showing up when they read the wheel. That's the only thing I did. And receiving what had been given to me. You see, if I'm his child, it's nothing I've done. If I'm his child, he hath made me meet. If I receive an inheritance, it's because of his work in my heart. That's the only way I could receive it. Hallelujah. I said I wouldn't mention it, but he tells us right there how he does it. He says he, by his power, he takes us out of the kingdom of darkness. And he translates us into the kingdom of his dear son. You don't just say, I want to be a child of God. You say yes to the gospel. But he makes you a child of God. Water baptism. Got some certificates to hand out this morning. Water Water baptism does not make you a child of God. He makes you a child of God. Oh, hallelujah. Could you stand? Praise the Lord. Is it a spiritual blessing to know you have an inheritance? If you think so. If you think so, would you worship him this morning all over the building? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to give an appeal this morning. And I keep coming back to this. But your future looks bleak. You're so troubled about things you're facing. It could be that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you're forgetting about the inheritance you have. But it could be that you've not surrendered your heart and life to Him. Jesus, you've died for my sins. Lord, I can't do this on my own. I can't figure it out. I can't save myself. I need the blood you shed for me. And if you would become His child, whatever you're facing, you could arise from this altar this morning and you could say, I can face the future because I have an inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. Do you need Jesus this morning? Church, I'm going to invite you to pray. Would you pray all over the building? Somebody here, they need Jesus. Oh, you need Him. Oh, you need Him. Oh, I'm so glad He said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you'll come, I'll take you in. If you'll come, you'll be my child. If you come, I'll cleanse you of your sin. Hallelujah. Is there someone here? We use these steps as an altar. If you're here, you just need God in your life. You need what He can help you with and give you. Would you come to this altar right now? You need Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful thing when He wraps His arms around you. You're my child. You're my child. You need Him this morning. Would you come right now? If you'll come, there'll be folks to pray with you, just to help you, just to to be there as you pray. Amen. You're here. You need. You need Jesus. You need that. That's what's missing in your life. Relationships with people have disappointed you horribly. Relationships with people haven't worked out. Oh, you hurt, been betrayed. None of this am I planning to say. It's just what I feel like pressing for right now. Relationships with people have not worked out. But you can be a relationship with God. You as child and He as Father. And not only do you have the wonderful thing of that relationship, but you can know in that relationship is an inheritance you can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Is that you this morning? Is the Holy Spirit, has a detective found you, the Holy Spirit, and said you're an heir. God's proportioned out grace. He's propor- You see, I don't know if God can forgive me. He's already got your forgiveness with your name on it. And said, so that's for them. That's for them. Amen. Anyone like to come right now anywhere in the building? Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the church to come and thank God for their inheritance. And as they're coming, amen, if you need a relationship established with Him, would you come with the church as they come to pray? 
all over the building. I need Jesus. I need that relationship. I need that closeness to Him. I need that inheritance. Amen. As the church is coming, you need that relationship. Come with them, folks. Let's be here to pray with you. Amen. There's still room. Come. You need Jesus. Amen. You can't handle it on your own. You can't even hardly think about facing the future, facing tomorrow. Oh, you need a relationship with Jesus. You need a relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's an inheritance, a glorious heritage coming down from the Father above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need that inheritance. Oh, I need that inheritance.